Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope you're all having a really wonderful day thus far. So we are now just over a week out, 11 days from the official start of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. And so we have a disturbance now highlighted on the National Hurricane Center's Outlook map. So we're going to be taking a look at all that is expected in terms of that system, but also in terms of the rainfall increase across sections of the basin. And so before I go into details, Please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. Okay, and so as we return to the satellite imagery, uh, we can see that there is some activity taking place across different areas of the North Atlantic. So going to the coast of Africa, we've got another tropical wave, the second of the season, making its way from the continent. And uh, that activity is in association with the first wave of the season. Now, of course, both of these are propagating towards the west, and it isn't likely that we're going to be seeing much from them in the coming days. And so uh, going to the Caribbean and uh, northern in South America, we can see that there is a lot of activity, especially in the vicinity of the Southern Central American territories and Northwestern South America. So lots of convection here. And uh, it is likely that a lot of rainfall activity is going to be induced across these areas. And uh, this activity is going to drift toward the east. So the southeastern Caribbean will likely experience a rainfall increase as we head to tomorrow and uh, Tuesday as well. And so we'll be looking at the rainfall totals expected across the region very shortly. But uh, for other areas, for the northern Caribbean, we can see that the activity in association with a trough is extending into parts of the northeastern basin, but there is nothing much at this time. Going over into most of the Greater Antilles, there isn't much activity either. So uh, there is a dry air mass that is in the region and that is helping to suppress the development of any major uh, shower and thunderstorm activity. So that is why things are in the clear right now for most of these areas. And, and so taking a closer look at the system, there we have it. Lots of shower and thunderstorm activity in association with it but most of that activity is offshore of anywhere not really bringing any major impacts to anywhere right now and so i'll go into what the national hurricane center anticipates through the next seven days a low 10 percent chance of development now uh, wind shear is expected to increase as we progress throughout today and that should suppress any major development from taking place in terms of this system but uh it is marked which means it has a very slight chance and very soon we're going to be looking at the models to see what they're expecting but uh, regardless even if this should develop into something uh, the only area that might feel some impacts is Bermuda and it is unlikely that it will even become anything strong and so now let's go ahead and move on to the rainfall totals expected across the Caribbean after which we'll look at what the models are showing in terms of that uh, system developing and so let us go ahead and kick start with the icon model here and so we can see that uh, as we're going to be heading throughout today a lot of rainfall activity is going to be taking place across northern South America of course and I'll uh, even see some of that extended into parts of the southeastern Caribbean as was stated earlier and uh, of course uh, in terms of that disturbance it is going to continue to induce all of that shower and thunderstorm activity but for other areas for uh, most of the lesser Antilles and also going to the greater Antilles, Hispaniola, Jamaica, Cuba, the Cayman Islands, and also into uh, parts of Central America going from parts of the Yucatan down to sections of Costa Rica. Uh, it doesn't seem as though there is going to be much rainfall activity taking place throughout today. Again, there is that dry air mass that is helping to suppress activity. The euro is somewhat in agreement with this, showing a little bit more rainfall for some parts of Jamaica, especially the southeastern part of the country. And uh, over into Central America, we can see that sections of Guatemala, Belize, and the Yucatan uh, might receive a bit of rainfall, but not anything much. Uh, and of course, most of that is confined to the uh, northern part of South America. And of course, uh, that includes sections of southern Central America, Panama, and southern Costa Rica. And then of course, all that disturbance induced that activity across some sections of the Greater Antilles. And finally, we have the GFS model being in agreement. So based on what we are seeing here, uh, there is that general consensus that uh, Northern South America, sections of the Southeastern Caribbean and parts of the Northeastern Caribbean will be receiving uh, some rainfall activity as we progress throughout today.
and uh, we even see some of those higher totals which is marked by those shades of purple in the vicinity of Panama and so guys if your area is experiencing any heavy rainfall please do not take any unnecessary risks because of course flash flooding is always a possibility especially in those flood prone areas now in terms of that disturbance developing and even something else let's go ahead and now look at what the different models have to show so we're going to be beginning with the icon and the black lines are isobars and they join areas of equal pressure and when we see them in a circular manner with the pressure being at least 10 13 millibars or lower that is indicating a low pressure system that could possibly be a tropical cyclone and so there we have the forecast time and let's see what the model is expecting so as we head to tuesday going to the middle of the week there it is showing that low pressure area developing and uh, showing that most of that activity which is indicated by the uh, the different colors those greens uh, will be confined to the east of it likely being displaced by the wind shear which would explain the asymmetrical look the convective activity currently has but to notice that it is showing another low pressure area developing off the southeastern coast of the u.s as we head to the latter part of the week very interesting here and this isn't an uncommon spot to see systems originating especially in the early part of the season uh go into the uh euro model here euro is showing Showing something pretty much similar definitely not showing something strong that activity likely going to be impacting Bermuda as I said earlier and uh, it definitely shows that other low pressure area developing off the southeastern US where we could see a bit of development taking place and then finally the GFS model is definitely showing all that activity in association with the current disturbance and then that low pressure area developing head into the end of this week so here we have the models being in agreement with what is likely as we progress throughout the next couple of days guys and as we progress throughout most of this week so if you're in bermuda heads up there's likely going to be an increase in all the rainfall activity as a result of a front that is going to be exiting the u.s and that is going to be pulling in that uh, all that activity in association with that disturbance but again as of right now chances are low for us to see any intensification or any significant development as we progress throughout the next couple of days and so guys that is pretty much it for this update video and of course i'll keep you posted on all that is happening so if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there and of course remember to always be with the wise